Hello everyone. This is another video for Collective Worship. So before we begin, just like we would if we were in the hall, we'll be quiet, we'll be still, and we'll prepare ourselves by lighting this candle. Today I'd like to tell you about a very special feast that is coming up soon in the church. I've spoken about feasts before. They are the days when we celebrate particular people or certain events, sometimes from the Bible and sometimes from other parts of Christian history. The feast that is coming up on the 1st of May is one from the Bible. So we're going right back into the time of Jesus when he was walking upon the earth. And the feast that we're celebrating on the 1st of May is the feast of these two men here. On this side, without the beard, this is St. Philip. And on the other side, this is St. James, the man with the big black beard. And these two were apostles, disciples, followers of Jesus. Now, because they're followers of Jesus, and they're the, some of the first followers of Jesus, they have a lot written about them in my book here. So let's see what my book says. The 1st of May, Philip and James, Apostles. Philip and James appear together in the list of the 12 apostles in the first three Gospels. That's Matthew, Mark and Luke. But they are frequently confused with other early saints who share their name. There are lots of Jameses in the Bible. There's quite a few Philips. And all the way through Christian history, there have been other saints who have had similar names. So sometimes they're confused. But we're talking about Philip and James, the apostles of Jesus. In John's Gospel, that's the fourth Gospel, Philip has a more important role, being the third of the apostles called by Jesus, and then himself bringing his friend Nathaniel to the Lord. Philip is the spokesman for the other apostles when they are questioning how Jesus is going to feed 5,000 people with just a few loaves and fish. And his conversation with Jesus means that Jesus then tells the disciples all that's going to happen to him. James is said to be the son of Alphaeus, and sometimes he's known as James the Less, or James the Younger. And his mother, in Mark's Gospel, is a witness to the crucifixion, so she's there when Jesus is put to death. So that's what my book says about these two apostles, these two followers of Jesus. Now, as we heard from that little bit of writing, Philip was very good at telling his friends about Jesus. And a lot of what Jesus spoke about is about friendship. It is about the way in which we act to each other and the way in which we act to God. Now, if you've got a best friend, so you might have a think now who your best friend is. What do you like to do with your best friend? No doubt you play together, you talk together, you have jokes and you share stories with each other. You may even have your own words that you use together that nobody else knows. Things that make your friendship special. And Philip and James are two of the friends of Jesus. They followed him wherever he went. They asked him questions. As we heard, Philip was prepared to question him and say, how is this going to happen? They had long conversations. They listened to each other. And that's part of what being a friend is. Spending time with people. Giving our time to them and them giving their time to us. We can't have strong friendships if we never spend any time with those friends. We need to make some time to be around them, to be with them, to share things with them. Not just our physical things like our, our games or our toys or our food or our snacks, but you know, our conversations, our ideas, our thoughts. All of this makes a really strong friendship. And Jesus, when he had his apostles around him, his disciples, he said to them, I call you my friends. This is God. 
God says, you're my friend. That's an incredible thing. Can you imagine how you would feel if the Queen visited the school and she came right over to your desk and she said, you are my friend. That would be amazing. She's really important. She knows thousands of people. And if she chose you to be her friend, you'd feel quite special. But God is even more special than the Queen. He knows everybody and everything. And he says to us, you are my friend. He allows us to have that relationship with him. And so we need to spend time with him, to talk to him, to share how we feel with him. And we do that through praying. Now, I've told you before, one of the best ways to pray is to remember a teaspoon. And that might sound strange, but teaspoon, when you see a recipe, is written down as T-S-P, teaspoon. And that can be a good reminder of how to pray, to say T, thank you, to thank God for something that's gone well. S, sorry, to apologise to God for the things that we've done that we know are wrong. And P, please, to ask God for the things that we need or for the needs of the world. So use that prayer every day to say thank you to God for the things that are good, to say sorry to God for the things we've done wrong, and to say please God to help in the situations where we need him most. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord God bless you, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you soon. Bye-bye.